After our next speaker, Justin Gottlieb, who is Professor of Ophthalmology, a retina specialist within the Department of Ophthalmology at the University of Wisconsin. And Justin's going to talk about one of the retinal complications that we see in diabetes, diabetic macular edema. Um, we generally think of two different types of retinal complications, and Justin will discuss the most common diabetic macular edema. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I think it's a tribute to you all that you're here to learn more about diabetes and diabetic retinopathy, because as Melissa was saying, taking care of yourselves, learning about this disease, learning about what we can do about it is really the most important first step to taking care and avoiding many of these problems. So I'm going to be talking about the treatment of diabetic macular edema. Um, later today, Dr. Mitatelyu, one of our newer faculty, is going to be talking about proliferative diabetic retinopathy, a problem of development of abnormal blood vessels. What I'm going to be speaking about is diabetic macular edema. So the macula, as you know, is the very center part of the retina, the part of the retina responsible for your sharp central vision, the vision you read with, used for driving, that you're using right now as you're looking straight ahead. Within the, within the retina and within the macula are small blood vessels, mostly capillaries, that leak in diabetes. So hyperglycemia leads to a loss of the structural strength of the blood vessels. They become leaky. The, me the medical word for the swelling that occurs from that leakage is edema. So diabetic, macular, the central part of the eye, edema. This may show dots of blood, cholesterol, and fats, lipids, in the area of the leakage. So here's a cartoon. So in the bottom, it's just showing the eye and showing that within the retina, in the back part is the macula. And what happens, you see in the, in the top part of this cartoon, is the little blood vessels start to develop outpouching. So this structural leakage, I mean, weakening, leads to little outpouchings of the blood vessels, and they leak. They first, they may leak just little dots of blood. They leak clear fluid from our bloodstream. They leak lipids and cholesterol with time. If you think of a sponge, a flat sponge, if you put a couple of drops of water in the middle of it, you'll see a little bit of a swelling, a little bit of an elevation. That's what it looks like to us when we're looking in. It looks like there's just this area of thickening of the retina. Here is a picture of the macula of a patient who has diabetes, has diabetic retinopathy, and you'll see to the left side, there is this ring of white material. That's lipid. That's cholesterol. And that's surrounding an area that's swollen. And within that area, you can also see little dots of blood. And that's an indication of where this leaking is occurring. So what can we do to reduce this if we see it? Well, first of all, let's hope we can prevent it from occurring at all. And I, have, and I think it's very important, the better one takes care of their, themselves, maintaining their hemoglobin A1C at 7 or less, maintaining their blood pressure at less than 140 over 80, making wise choices about smoking and eating, we hope we can avoid ever even seeing this. And, we, and as Ms. L Melissa said, we're reducing the incidence of these problems because we're taking better care of ourselves. And you all are doing the first step of that, of being here and learning about how to take care of yourselves. So here's a cross-section of the retina of a patient who has macular edema. And you can see that there's this bump, and there are these dark spaces under that bump. The dark spaces are actually fluid that is collected in the retina, making it thick, kind of like looking at that sponge from the side. You can see where it's got a bump where there's swelling. And when there's swelling there, that reduces vision. So what are our treatment options? Well, first, we can actually try to close the leaky vessels. We do that primarily with laser photocoagulation, and the term that one will hear when we do this in treating diabetic macular edema is focal laser. Focal meaning we have small laser burns to treat the individual leaky spots. Or we can reduce leakiness, and this is something that we're doing now that's revolutionized what we do in our treatment of diabetes, and that's the injections of medications into the eye that actually will reduce the leakiness to help strengthen the blood vessels again. 
And we can do that really in two ways right now. One is the use of a steroid or anti-VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor injections. These are commonly, more commonly used now over the last five years to treat this diabetic macular edema. So first let me look, let's look at focal laser. Here's a picture, kind of an unusual picture, of, of someone sitting at a laser slit lamp and the physician is actually applying laser to this patient because she has diabetic macular edema. So here's an example. Here's a patient, the eye of a patient, and you can see again this lipid, fatty material surrounding the center. Within that was swelling. Sometimes we'll do a dye test or a fluorescein angiogram, and you can see in the upper picture there's little teeny white dots. Those are actually the leaky spots. In the bottom picture, actually shows where that white dye is leaking from the blood vessels. And that's, what, and that's what eventually we would like to reduce is that leakage. So what we can do, and I have some little arrows here, if you can see them, they're pointing to where laser burns were actually placed directly where that leakage was occurring. Some of it's in the area of the, of the, of the, of the uh, lipid, but we, can, we knew from that map from the angiogram where the leakage is occurring, and so laser is applied directly to those areas of leakage, and that decreases the leakage. And then at the, after several months, in this picture, it's a little bit overexposed, but now you can see that all that lipid is gone because we reduced the amount of leakage and the swelling went away, and this patient was able to maintain very good vision after the laser. Here's another example in the upper panel. On the left, um, is the eye and, you, and a little bit of lipid, but I can tell you that this was quite quite thickened, swollen. Then the angiogram shows many, all that white is because there's so many leaky spots. In the bottom picture you can see here, we put literally 50 to 100 spots of laser in an attempt to decrease the leakage in this patient who had diabetic macular edema. So the next way, as I said, is actually to try to make the vessels leak less. And these we use intravitreal, meaning into the center part of the eye, into the vitreous cavity injections. And that, this reduces the leakage of the blood vessels, and we, we may ca call this medical therapy, because it doesn't require any destruction of blood vessels with a laser, but actually goes straight, straight, straight to the blood vessels, actually causing them to stop leaking. But it requires multiple injections of the eye over many years. And on, this picture actually shows a patient receiving this injection with a very thin needle into the eye. So the first medication that we kind of experimented with and was shown to be effective are co corticosteroids. Now, many of you who are diabetic know that steroids can actually cause your blood sugar to go up. We like to avoid um, steroids, but in the eye, in very small doses, they don't affect one's blood sugar at all, and they're known to reduce um, this vascular endothelial growth factor. This is a protein that's released when the blood vessels are affected by diabetes, when there's not enough oxygen there, and this VEGF is, really makes the blood vessels very leaky. So these corticosteroids we know can reduce the amount of VEGF in the eye. They also know that it, it literally causes the strengthening of the, of the bonds between the, the cells of the blood vessels. So I told you that diabetes, the hyperglycemia, causes a weakening of the blood vessels. Here we can go to tighten, tighten the, the junctions between the cells so they're not so leaky. So the medication that we use most commonly is called triessence. It's triamcinolone acetonide. And it's a picture that actually goes into the eye as little crystals. And those crystals then melt, and then the, and the um, steroid goes right to where the leaking is occurring. We rarely now use this as a primary treatment, but it is very effective, especially in eyes that have previously undergone cataract removal. In fact, a study from the Diabetes Retinopathy Clinical Research Network showed that this medication was, was effect, more effective than laser in eyes that had already had cataract surgery. Part of the reason is that steroid itself can cause cataracts, and it can also cause glaucoma. So in eyes that have already had cataract, rem cataract, cataract removed, we may choose to use these steroids as an injection. Another way of delivering a steroid is a different steroid, not triamcinolone, but dexamethasone. And this is injected with this injector. You can see it on a picture of this injector, in which a little, a little capsule of, um, of dexamethasone 
about the size of a grain of rice, a little smaller than a grain of rice, is injected into the eye, and it slowly breaks down, re releasing the steroid over about 90 days. And this was recently approved for treatment of diabetic macular edema by the FDA. So um, again, not, really, not often used as a first-line treatment. Still laser and, and um, the anti-VEGS are used first-line more often, partially because of the side effects of the cataract and glaucoma, but are very effective in the patients um, who need this. Now commonly used, and I bet some of you here are actually receiving injections of this anti-VEGF, such as Avastin, Lucentis, or Ilea. Those of you who are also attended this morning for macular degeneration learned about these injections, Avastin, Lucentis, and Ilea, because they also stop in, in macular degeneration the leaking of blood vessels. We similarly use these in macular degeneration, I mean in diabetic retinopathy, to reduce the leakiness. And they directly block the effect of the VEGF, again, this VEGF molecule, which we know causes so many problems. So Lucentis was, is FDA approved. It was the first of the medications that was FDA approved for the treatment of diabetic macrodema. It was shown in, again, a very large trial that we participated here in the, at the university to, sh um, to demonstrate that um, that is actually superior in patients with central macular edema. It was superior to laser. Um, in, in treating, and it actually caused an improvement of vision in many of the patients who had diabetic macrodema. And then two trials that were actually sponsored by the maker of Lucentis, RISE and RIDE trials, also showed the same result, is that this was very effective, but required treatments over, th over up to three years or more of, the, of these injections in the eye. ILEA um, is a, another anti-VEGF intervitreal injection. Um, it's also known as a Flibercept. It was just recently approved for the treatment of diabetic macrodema, and two trials, also sponsored by the maker of ILEA, showed that this was more effective than laser alone in treatment of diabetic macrodema. And finally, Avastin, and Avastin um, is the most commonly used around the country and around the world for treatment of diabetic macrodema, partially because it's much cheaper than Lucentis or ILEA. Lucentis or ILEA costs up to $2,000 per injection, whereas Avastin costs more like $50 because we can take multiple injections from one vial. Um, and a, and a, a study called the Bolt Study uh, in England showed that the visual acuity was superior to laser. And the DRCR is actually currently performing a, a, a comparative study, and we are participating in that here at the university, um, of Avastin, Lucentis, and ILEA to see if any is more effective than the others. So in summary, we really have two excellent treatment options. First, focal laser, which reduces vision loss. It, re it requires fewer treatments, but, but is not as effective, perhaps, in some cases, as the intervitual injections, which require multiple treatments over several years, but may actually improve, in vi improve in vision. So thank you very much for, for coming, and um, I'll be able to answer some questions.